So the last thing I want to talk about with uh, weather is the concept of lapse rate and stability. Okay, so we talked about how rising air um, is basically unstable air. So that's a good thing to remember, right? Um, stable air is when we don't have turbulence, right? It's, it's stable and it's kind of, it's not rising. It's moving kind of horizontally, if anything. And then unstable air is rising air uh, that gives us turbulence and like, you know, cumuliform clouds and stuff like that. So I want to relate that to what we call the temperature lapse rate. So here we have all the layers of Earth's atmosphere. We have the troposphere, stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. Now, if you look, this is miles over here. So six miles here, this is about 40,000 feet right here. So us as general aviation pilots, we only care about what's in the troposphere. So that's what I did here. This is just the troposphere over here. So this is zoomed in on only this part right here. So what happens in the troposphere, we start here and this is uh, degrees Celsius. So about 15 degrees Celsius, this is the standard atmosphere in the troposphere. Every thousand feet, it drops about two degrees Celsius. This is our standard model of the atmosphere. So every thousand feet, it drops two degrees till at about 40,000 feet, you know, at the top of the troposphere, we're past like minus 40 degrees, like minus 50 degrees Celsius or something like that, right? Like somewhere over here, maybe even minus 60 degrees Celsius. I didn't, I don't check this little graph for accuracy, but you get the hint, right? And it's pretty lin linear in that, you know, it's a straight line change of about, right, two degrees per 1,000 feet. So it drops two degrees per 1,000 feet. Now, if the air is stable, or sorry, unstable, however, it cools at a faster rate with altitude. Okay, so that would be like, instead of cooling two degrees Celsius per 1,000 feet, it cools like three or four degrees Celsius per 1,000 feet. So unstable air here, I'm gonna draw in green. That would start here at 15 degrees at the surface, and it's gonna really get cold much faster, okay? So now it's already at, you know, minus 40, and we're only at 20,000 feet, right? It cools much faster with altitude. Now, stable air, I'm going to draw that in blue. It cools at a slower rate with altitude. So, for example, instead of cooling at 2 degrees per 1,000 feet, it might cool at 1 degree per 1,000 feet. So that line would kind of look like something like this. Right. And so it might never get to minus 40 degrees by the time we get to 40,000 feet. Obviously, this is an exaggeration, but you get the point. It doesn't drop, the temperature doesn't drop as much with altitude in stable air. All right. So the reason I want to talk about that is now I want to imagine here how stable air and unstable air create weather. Okay, so here we have stable air. And I want you to imagine, so all this is stable air. Stable air, stable air, stable air. And remember, stable air cools with altitude at a slower rate than standard. Okay, so everything around here is stable air, except for we have these little pockets of standard air in these arrows, okay, following these arrows. These little pockets of standard air rising up above this mountain. Now, the pockets of this standard air are going to be at a temperature when it rises less than the surrounding stable air. Because remember, the stable air cools at a slower rate than standard with altitude. So this is the stable air temperature scale here. Okay, so it's 20 degrees here, it's 10 degrees here, it's zero degrees here. But the standard air in these red packets is being pushed up the mountain and it's cooling at a faster rate. So that it's already at zero degrees Celsius by this altitude here, where all the air surrounding it is 10 degrees Celsius. So this, these packets of air are colder than the surrounding air. 
So it's more, they're more dense than the surrounding air. So that makes them want to stay down. And so after the mountain, they kind of go back down and they don't go much higher. You know, they don't go up here. They pretty stay close to the mountain and they create these kind of clouds that are almost attached and kind of form with the shape of the mountain. And that's why they're kind of staying uh, laminar with the mountain attached to the mountain these kind of stratus, low level, you know, in terms of AGL above ground level clouds. And that's because, again, the air, the, the air be, the, that's right, being pushed up and rising is colder than the surrounding air. It's more dense, so it wants to stay down. Okay. Now, on the flip side of that, let's say we have unstable air. So all this air around our packets of air is unstable. Okay. So we have unstable air, and then we have packets of standard air. And again, we're climbing up this mountain, but unstable air cools with altitude at a faster rate than standard. So here we have our unstable air, 20 degrees Celsius. At this altitude, it's 10 degrees, and this altitude, zero degrees. And then our standard air isn't, you know, because the unstable air around it is cooling faster. It doesn't get to 12 degrees until up here where the unstable air around it is zero degrees. So our packets of air that are being pushed up by this mountain are at a temperature that's higher than the surrounding air. And so they're less dense than the surrounding air. So the unstable air around it is more dense than these packets of air that are being forced up the mountain. So because they're less dense, they're just gonna continue to rise. It's almost like a, a ramp, right? Like a skateboard ramp. It's just going to continue to rise. And then as it rises, any of water vapor in there condenses. And then I mentioned this before, we have something called the heat of condensation. So literally the act of condensation puts off energy in the form of heat and it he continues to heat these packets. And it just adds to the, the heat in there and lowering the density and it continues to rise. So you get these rising vertically developing clouds in unstable air. And that is why, why you do it, because it's all about temperature changes between the air that's being forced up and the unstable air around it.